So now we are moving on with to six zone and CEO Tara Heitner. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's, a, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank and uh, yeah, without further ado, you may go ahead with your presentation. Fantastic. Um, so my name is Tara Heitner. I'm CEO of Suxone. And just quickly, this forward-looking statement. So Suxone is an emerging biotech company where we're focused on developing breakthrough therapies for disorders of the immune system. Our immediate focus is uh, dis uh, autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. And we recently completed a phase two trial in moderate COVID patients, which I'll touch on a bit later. Now, right now we, are f um, we have a uh, pipeline with uh, three programs and our main focus currently is startup activities for a planned phase 2B trial in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, why are we focused in this area? These autoimmune diseases are diseases where you don't die from these diseases, but you have to live with them. You have to live with them for decades. And this means years, decades of pain, and often that can lead to disability. And currently there are therapies that exist. However, there are shortcomings. Many patients don't respond to current therapies. And even if they do respond, some patients suffer from terrible side effects. So there's a compromise to treating their disease with current treatments for many patients. It's our ambition to develop the therapies which have um, in, um, competitive uh, safety profiles so that they are much more tolerable, easy to administer, and so patients can stay on them for longer. We're also focused in the area of multiple sclerosis and we have a very uh, innovative program with a new mode of action called T20K, which I'll touch upon later. Now, in order to be successful in these areas, we have put together a, a team of uh, very experienced professionals who have uh, love what we, we love what we do, and we're dedicated to, um, to the long haul. Put it, getting pro uh, programs through to the market is something that requires dedication and passion, and that's the team we have today. We have a new CMO, with experience in running uh, rheumatoid arthritis trials from many years in big pharma, a new COO with uh, also decades of experience in drug development, and a team with experience in uh, financing and governance to help us with our planned uplisting process. So why do we need new drugs for rheumatoid arthritis? Currently, patients are when they're diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis are treated with standard of care, such as methotrexate. And this is a drug which is very inexpensive, but it has side effects. Most, there's about 33% of patients that can't tolerate it. There's about 40% of patients that don't respond to it. So when this happens, the treatment is escalated and combined with other treatments such as steroids, which also has side effects. But often patients don't respond well and their DC still progresses. They need to be escalated to biologicals such as IL-6 inhibitors and TNF-alphas. And these require injections and infusions. JAK inhibitors are also um, a drug which is introduced once these drugs fail. So ultimately what patients suffer from as they go through these decades of trying to chase down uh, a treatment for a disease is constant uh, tr uh, treatment switches and ultimately some side effects. Recently, a, ma a major class of drugs called JAK inhibitors um, has some serious warnings. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you, you know, rheumatoid arthritis patients can't take these drugs, but there's a different um, benefit risk ratio. And, and so there is a lot more room in the market for drugs with a better safety profile that are easier to tolerate. And that's what we're working on. So Rebeximod is a drug with a novel mode of action. It works on the, the biological fundamental cause of the disease. Rebeximod targets a cell type, which is directly responsible for the, the joint damage in rheumatoid arthritis, the damage to the cartilage and to the bone. 
It inhibits the development of the infiltrating inflammatory macrophage. And the effect this has is it doesn't just inhibit the uh, you know, mop up the cytokines like TNF-alpha and IL-6 after they've been expressed. It actually goes upstream inside the cell and turns off the tap, preventing the expression of multiple cytokines. So I mentioned multiple cytokines a few times. What this means is that Rebexmod doesn't just inhibit TNF-alpha or IL-6. We have shown that it inhibits a wide range of cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, that are responsible for joint damage in RA. So we hope, and we, we, um, our vision for Rebexmod is that we'll be able to treat a wider range of patients for a longer time without serious side effects. This is our vision that it'll be a first line treatment for patients instead of methotrexate or on top of methotrexate, which can be taken by many patients over an extended period of time, delaying the need for treatment escalation and constant treatment switches. So we're aiming to improve the life quality of rheumatoid arthritis patients. Now, what do we base this on? Well, we have uh, data from a phase 2A trial where we ha have shown that Rebexamod does um, cause improvements for moderate to severe RA patients. Although we didn't meet the endpoint at 12 weeks, at 16 weeks we saw statistically significant um, improvements. And this is meaningful. It's meaningful because we also had a very, very broad range of patients in this trial. And going forward, we can narrow our patient population to get a greater signal. And we can also run a longer trial to see greater effect. Now, I'm aiming for patients that in this trial that have inadequate, inadequate um, response to methotrexate. And just so you know, there are a lot of patients, 500,000 at least, in Europe and in, uh, in the United States. And so if you s estimate uh, pricing to be similar to that of a JAK inhibitor, you could reach approximately a 1 billion market annually, treating this, sub this subset of patients. So it is still a very substantial market. Now, as you know, Rebexamod is being developed for both RA and for COVID-19. Both have very good market potential, but there is a much greater market potential in rheumatoid arthritis based on our calculations. And this is why rheumatoid arthritis is our focus for now. Although we really look forward to um, getting the readout for our COVID trial and see how we can progress there. So just to give you an idea of what's going to happen, we're currently in all the startup activities, selecting a, a world-class CRO who we work with. And um, we hope to start the tr trial as soon as possible, either end of the year or beginning of Q1, where we will run the trial for about 12 to 18 months and then get a readout in uh, 2023. After that, we hope to um, be in a partnership. Uh, one of the main um, Business strategy is to enter into partnership with a major uh, global player. And we are currently in discussions with many different players across uh, the world. Um, so this type of partnership could come into place at any moment. So just briefly to recap on COVID-19, this is still uh, a raging pandemic, unfortunately. And I show this slide because uh, um, from the country I'm from, Canada, there is a, a huge outbreak in Alberta, where they recently brought in the military, and uh, there's complete breakdown of the healthcare system. Despite the fact that on the right, you can see that if you get vaccinated, there is almost, there's very little chance of being hospitalized. It's 90% of patients hospitalized in ICU are unvaccinated. So we're fighting against human nature. And for this reason, we still need therapies to treat uh, COVID-19. We get a, there is a, um, programs put in place by the FDA and by the EMA. We're in contact with the FDA. We have an IND in the U.S. We're in contact with the EMA, and um, we actually took advantage recently of um, an initiative by the FDA to pre-review the data. No, sorry, to pre-review the data analysis plan, 
Um, and uh, this is unique for the COVID and it indicates their interest in really promoting and accelerating um, trials for COVID-19 therapies. So what this means is that when the data comes out, it will have a quality of uh, a stamp of quality, allowing us to make decisions on how to move forward. So we expect that um, readout hopefully by the end of the year. And finally, our um, program on multiple sclerosis. Now multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease where the immune system incorrectly attacks the, um, the myelin sheath, which is a coating on the nerve cell. Um, it, the, the, these T cells elicit a, a cytokine called IL-2, which recruits colonies of, uh, of T cells to further attack the myelin sheath and um, causes it to lose in integrity. And the signaling across the neuron is interrupted, leading to a host of terrible side effects such as, or uh, symptoms such as uh, tingling, loss of balance and cognitive problems, among others. It hits people in the prime of their life, when they're about to start families, when they're about to go to school, start new jobs. And it, it affects millions of people around the world, but all, especially in northern regions like Scandinavia, Canada, and the United States. Current therapies are available, but they have terrible side effects, and um, they're difficult to take and difficult to administer. So our goal is to find a drug which is easy to administer, has a good safety profile, and this is what we found so far in T20K. It's a peptide therapeutic which acts to halt the disease progression at an early stage, it, ha it is shown to um, decrease the uh, expression of IL-2 and uh, the expression of IL-2 receptor on T cells. In this way, it reduces the, uh, it changes the phenotype of the cell, reduces the expression of cytokines, and thus protects the disease, the patient from disease progression. We have data in um, mouse models of, of multiple sclerosis supporting this. And on the left-hand side, you can see that uh, we are able to uh, prevent the progression of uh, the development of the disease when, given, when the drug is given before the symptoms develop. But even if you allow the disease to develop slightly on the right-hand side and the drug is administered later, we're able to prevent further progression. So we're very excited about this and we're currently in a collaboration with uh, Medical University of Vienna building upon this data. And this collaboration will help us to make some decisions that we need to do before the end of the year on which administration form we want to move forward with. And um, that would be either an oral drug or a subcutaneous administered drug. The key for us is efficacy. We want to develop the most efficacious drug. And secondly, convenience. Once we establish that, we'll make a decision on how to move forward. This is also a very substantial market. 33 billion is estimated to grow to. Um, and we believe that because of its novel mode of action, its ease of administration, and its good safety profile, we would be able to adopt a substantial fraction of this market. So what's up next for Sixone? Our vision is, in the, uh, as we go forward, is to expand our pipeline in the future, where we will be able to do so by looking at additional indications for rebeximod. This is a drug with a unique mode of action that's very central to many different autoimmune diseases as well as neuroinflammatory diseases. And so we'll explore secondary indications and expand our pipeline in this way. And we'll do the same for T20K. And we'll also potentially in license new um, assets in the future. So this is our uh, plan for expansion. This is our vision for Sexone as we go into the future. And both uh, Rebeximod and T20K have a lot of potential. So in short, I just want to conclude. So we're an emerging company with a brand new team on board with a lot of energy to push our programs through to the next level. Um, we are working on drugs with novel modes of action we're addressing very big markets where there is a high unmet need for subsets of patients. 
and we are hoping to make breakthrough therapies to really make a meaningful impact for patients with autoimmune diseases. Happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Tara, for a very interesting presentation. You're welcome. Um, we actually have a question from the audience. Uh, when you say that a partnership might, might occur at, at any moment, uh, wouldn't that mean giving up a lot of the value lying ahead? What's your reasoning about that? You can make partnerships in different ways, and it doesn't mean you have to give away all the value, but it is a very good question, and it's very critical on uh, who you partner with and, and how. So we are very cognizant of that, and when we talk to, we want to, we want to find the, the, perfect, the strategic partner. That means a partner who has uh, experience in RA, who can bring something to the program, who has the ability to uh, commercialize, that has distribution channels in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, we don't necessarily need to um, you know, partner every, you know, in all um, markets right away, and we can save some of the value for a later time point. Thank you. And uh, what do you know today about which patients you should focus on going forward? I'm referring to the, the data you have gathered, gathered so far in your phase 2A studies. Do you know anything about how to select patients going forward for the 2B study? Yeah, so that's a really good question. In the phase 2A study, um, they actually, the inclusion criteria included uh, patients that were um, not responding or inadequate responders to methotrexate, but also to TN-alpha, also to other like steroids and, and other um, treatments. And so it was very broad um, patient inclusion. It also included patients that had been diagnosed for, for many, many years. What we're going to do is focus on uh, patients that are methotrexate um, inadequate responders and that have been recently diagnosed. Okay, and that should kind of lower the bar for achieving significantly uh, mean and meaningful results. We'll be able to show the full impact of the, uh, of the mode of action uh, by, by having a more homogeneous patient population, correct? I see, thank you. And to uh, round up the Q&A, um, if we go into your vision, where do you see six zone in, let's say, five, three to five years' time? Yeah, that's uh, sort of my wish list. But uh, hopefully in five years, we're uh, a much larger company. We have a team of maybe double or triple the size. We have a, a pipeline with multiple programs, including additional uh, indications for Bexamod and T20K. Uh, we already have a partnership at that point. Um, with uh, potentially at least one partnership for Bexmon and potentially one also for T20K. Um, and with the proceeds from that, we've been licensed a couple of assets that are in early stage development. Okay, that sounds really exciting. Thank you very much and uh, very good much. luck on your journey. Thank you, pleasure. <laughs>